We have entry number eight, Ana Maria Daniela Sarka from Kyoto University. Her presentation title is A Faster, More Easily Available Tool to Detect and Quantify HIV-1 Maturation. Daniela, please go ahead with your presentation. Hello, everyone. Have you ever tried to nicely cut a piece of paper using a needle? I'm sure you can get the job done, but it's not going to be very efficient, is it? It might take you a long time or might not cut exactly the way you want it to. What you really want for the job are a pair of scissors. Now, this is a tool made for cutting nice, straight lines in one swift movement. Well, that's the kind of tool that I'm developing to study HIV, particularly one step of the HIV life cycle called maturation. This is a really important step because without it, the virus exists, the cells make it, but it's not infectious, meaning it's pretty much harmless. Researchers discovered early on how important this step is and have developed many drugs to prevent HIV maturation. But as time passed, the virus became resistant and one by one, the drugs stopped working. Now you might be asking yourself, so what's the problem, just develop a new drug? Well, the problem is that we don't have very good tools to look at HIV maturation. We don't have the metaphorical scissors to quickly and swiftly dissect this step of the viral life cycle. So developing a new drug takes a really long time when you have to use electron microscopy, in this case, the needle, to see how well the drug works. Electron microscopy can see the virus in great detail, but it can only see a few particles at a time, and it takes weeks, if not months, to take these images. Also, not everyone can afford it, and you need years of training to be able to use it. Because of that, I'm developing a fluorescence microscopy technique, scissors if you will, that can see HIV maturation at a very large scale, thousands, tens of thousands of particles at a time in a fraction of the time and cost. This will speed up the process of developing new drugs against HIV and also help us gain more knowledge of this crucial step of the HIV life cycle. Now, I know what you're thinking. We are literally living through a pandemic. Why am I not developing to tools against the coronavirus instead? Well, many people may not know this, but HIV also once started as a pandemic, and it never really stopped. There are still 38 million people living with HIV right now, and 33 million people have died because of it. For a little perspective, there were 8 million people with active COVID about a month ago and 1 million deaths and HIV cannot be cured yet. But more importantly, the reason why we still need to study HIV and other drugs is because this is how we obtain the tools to act in the face of a pandemic. Researchers were able to quickly and swiftly identify, study, and develop a vaccine against the coronavirus by using the knowledge and tools that generations before them have developed to study viruses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me ask you a question from Professor Tate. How does your scissor work to prohibit the HIV virus maturation? What is the target to be cut by your scissor or drug? Well, the scissors is only an analogy for being a very efficient tool. However, my, uh, I'm actually developing a tool. It's not necessarily uh, cutting HIV, it's just a form of seeing the way the virus transforms. So the way that this technique works is we are seeing, as you can see here, uh, images, small colored particles of HIV. So when the virus matures, it changes shape. So the color also changes. It's a really neat way to see how the virus transforms using a very, very common techniques such as fluorescence microscopy. It doesn't cut the virus itself. It just shows us how the virus changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Daniela.